Hey everybody, welcome back to our 15th episode of Vinyl Taste, and I'm still old school Pat. I was Dance Hall Neil. I am now, uh... Oh, damn, I can't think of a good joke. I'm still Dance Hall Neil. Oh, well. All right, well, today we're bringing you back um, Fuck our it. second episode on Jamaican music. Today we're going to be covering the rock steady years through the early reggae years, so roughly 1966 to 74. And um, I wanted to start out like I did last time, uh, bring everybody up to speed to where we were at. Um, and where we left off was pretty much in early 1965, when um, the ska songs were still coming out, um, but the faster tempos were slowing down. Uh, more emphasis was being put on the rhythm section. Um, around this time, bass guitars went from being the, the big stand-up basses to electric basses. That was a major development um, in Jamaican music. And so you had the root boy period, um, where you had the uh, the artists um, from the, the slums, you know, singing to their own audience, people like Peter Tosh and the Clarendonians, the early whalers from that period. Um, I mentioned Peter Tosh is the toughest. It's a good place to start with that because um, it has the Root Boy music era songs like Rasta Shook Them Up and, and just the whole first, you know, eight songs in the CD, which is the CD comprises all of um, Peter Tosh's work for Clement Dodd, except for two songs and everything he ever did uh, for them. So, but then Rock City comes along in late 1966. Hopeton Lewis um, cut the song called Take It Easy. You guys probably heard it, but it was featured in a commercial in the last couple of years or so on TV. But it was the first, it was the first uh, song in the Rock City style. Um, and in 1967, Rock Steady dominated the Jamaican dance hall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, as Rocksteady was developing, uh, its characteristics were nearly the opposite of what ska was. That is, you know, Rocksteady was slower. It wasn't faster per neck. It was very refined, and it was kind of, you know, it was cooler. Um, ska bass lines were different. They were slower, more refined. Um, they, they changed to play repeated patterns that syncopated the rhythm. Uh, bass and drums became more prominent in the Rocksteady, in the Rocksteady era, which was a feature of all later stages of Jamaican music, you know, including mm -hmm. the dub of the 70s. The drum and the bass. Um, the, the horns became more supportive. They weren't all out front and dominant like they were in ska music. Um, there was a big soul influence on, on, on rock city vocals. Um, one such soul artist would probably be Curtis Mayfield, who David Rodigan called the godmother of reggae because of his, you know, profound influence on Jamaican musicians and music. Um, so Rocksteady, um, which was prominent from the autumn of 1966 to about the summer of 1968. Um, also around this time, uh, the first DJs were using um, Rocksteady music to toast over. Hugh Roy, you know, in his first, in his first release music, he was toasting over Rocksteady music. And versioning also has its roots in this period. Uh, but we wanted to start out talking today about Duke Reed uh, as a producer who dominated the Rocksteady era. Um, with his productions of um, Jamaican Rock City music. Uh, his label, Treasure Isle, he had other labels as well, Duchess, Trojan. But Treasure Isle, um, it was a wooden studio right above his liquor store. Um, Tommy McCook ran his group uh, that did the recordings there. Tommy and, uh, McCook's group was called the Supersonics. Duchess and, being his wife. Right, right, that's right. And the, uh, and the group that Duke Reed had uh, we're like a who's who of rock steady groups. So you're talking groups like the, the Techniques, the Jamaicans, the Three Tops, the Sensations, the Silver Tones, Justin Hines and the Dominoes, the Melodians, the Paragons, the Techniques, on and on and on, right? So I wanted to start off um, my rock steady collection showing you um, here's here's a Duke Reed uh, productions of Pat Kelly. Pat Kelly, the Minute Series. This is a compilation of uh, Pat Kelly, the Minute Series, and it's on VP Records. And it collects 19 songs from this um, Jamaican vocalist of the rock steady era. Pat Kelly is one of the best. <laughs> yeah, I got this, uh, this since we're talking about Duke Reed, this weird uh, 45 here that is not even a band or a group or anything, but it's from Treasure Isle. It's uh, Religious Service at Bond Street Gospel Hall, directed by Duke Reed. 
So, it's a freaking church service. Oh, wow. Interesting. Not, n nothing, nothing to jam out to or anything like that, but it's... And I, I hadn't seen anything like that before. Like I don't really under I don't really understand it why he uh, did it. But. Nice. I'll show you my I pulled out uh, my melodious swing and dine release, which is uh, put out a heartbeat, a compilation of the melodious, the early um, the rock steady and the early reggae of the melodious swing and dine. That's uh, a good one. Sixty track for that. I brought out. Um, well, let me show you this one. This is um, this is a record that came out on Trojan in the mid '80s, compiled by Steve Barrow. It's called Duke Reed, Ba Ba Boom, classic rock steady and reggae '67 to '72, with some pretty rare stuff on it. Um, Passion, love by Melodians. Um, I love Weather Report by the Tenors. Great record. I put uh. Oh, I pulled this one. This is the best of Duke Reed Treasure okay. Duke Reed Treasure Chest. Double disc set. Best Rock Steady. Right there. That's the Holy Grail right there. <laughs> For the Reed Rock Steady. Two disc set on that. And uh, I also have the um, But anyway, I have the, uh, moving on, do you want to go on to, to, to um, Clement Dodd? Sure. All right, so uh, Studio One and Clement Dodd released a lot of great music in the Rock City era as well um, to compete with um, the Duke Reeds. And um, the band at, the, uh, at Studio One was the Soul Bangers, led by Jackie Matu, who came from the Scatolites. Um some of the best um, Studio One rock steady would have to include vocalists like Bob Andy. I brought out his song, but Ken Booth. I know you, I know you probably got some great Ken Booth. Yeah. I have the, uh, the Mr. Rock Steady album that's from that, Studio One. That's early. And uh, this is just a compilation of Ken Booth's um, rock steady early reggae hits. Ken Booth at Man and Sits, Studio One. Collected on Heartbeat Records. But, uh, but yeah, Clement Dodd, he had his, he had his artists, like, um, well, he had early Slim Smith, too. I think, I believe you have that one, too. You know, like Slim Smith on Studio One from Rock City. Oh, yeah, the, uh, Born to Love CD. This one's, uh, Heartbeat. He's been called the greatest vocalist to come out of the rock steady era Smith. he's good really really enjoy his uh his vocals gone too soon yeah. you know so uh so to speak do you have the termites termites do the rock steady oh nice that's uh really great singers They're really young too i mean good god look at that so that's a different time right there in jamaica you know what i mean yeah <laughs> And yeah, I, think then, I taped that one off you. you. You did? I think so. Yeah, I don't know what to Yeah. That's your, this is your typical uh, 90s uh, heartbeat kind of like issue, you know. Yeah. Who else recorded for Studio One? Let's see, the Gay Lads, uh, Marcia Griffiths, Dawn Penn, and Roy Wilson. I got, I pulled his, um, Studio One Rocksteady, um, which is a lot of us collected on this called uh, Original Twelve Best of Delroy Wilson, which is really from that period. It's not it's not a career spanning Best of Delroy Wilson. It's, it's the original Studio One. Um, so this goes from this is from the Rocksteady period. These twelve songs. We also had Carlton and his shoes. Who else did it? Okay, so getting into some other producers. This was a period of other producers in the mix. People like Joe Gibbs entered around this time. Um, I got a really good Joe Gibbs compilation. It's called Joe Gibbs Scorchers from the Early Years, 1967 to 73. It's a reggae anthology. Two Descent came out on VP. That's good. Uh, other producers. 
Bunny Lee, um, who also, his production started around then, and he also um, was producing Slim Smith. Um, I, I brought, I said this record before in a different episode, but this is my Slim Smith record, Early Days, which is the Bunny Lee Productions. Slim Smith's rock study. Yeah, all right. Um, gosh, you had so many new producers come out in those, in those days. You had like Winston Lowe, Ken Lack, Sanjay Pottinger, J.J. Johnson, Lloyd Daly, WIRL, which was founded by Edward Siaga. Um, you also had producers like Derek Harriet come out around then. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, at the donkey years, 61 to 65. Oh, nice. Uh, the Jamaican gold stuff. It's hard to find the uh, Jamaican gold stuff now for some reason. I don't understand why. But if you have anything on the Jamaican gold, uh, it's probably pretty rare at this point. Um, yeah, that label went under, I think, a, a long time ago. Yeah, this, this shit's rare. rarer than uh, More rare than Blood and Fire stuff. But uh, his vocal work here... Is is you know monumental. Mm, nice. This looks so young. I mean, he went on to he went on to go into uh, early reggae and also roots, nice. didn't he? I mean, he he was around for quite a while. Yeah, he did. He and he did produce roots in the seventies later on. Yeah. The last one I want to show from this Rocksteady era with the uh, Ethiopians, I pulled Let's Ska and Rocksteady with the Ethiopians. Hmm. Which is. Uh, Engine 54 on it, and uh, Train to Glory, good stuff. And uh, How come the that, cover looks different from what I remember seeing? Don't they, they have like an alternate cover? Or like a oh, reissue yeah. cover? I don't think so. Hmm. Huh, wicked. Yeah. But uh, moving on now to the early reggae years. Uh, which are pretty much 1968-74 before the dominance, dominance of Roots. Um, the first record to use the term reggae, everybody agrees, the first record that used that term was Toots and the Maytals do the reggae. Um, but in terms of... Spelled R uh, R E G G A Y, I think, right? It's yeah, a little yeah, dip, it's totally different. Reggae. That's true. You know. Different spellings. Um, but as a term, that was the first song it, the term was used in. However, it's, it's a lot less easy to identify the first reggae record. It's like trying to say, what is the first rock and roll record? That'll lead you down a rabbit hole, too. But um, shifting from Rocksteady in early 1968, the contenders for first reggae record would certainly include uh, Larry Marshall's Nanny Goat uh, from Studio One. Um, another producer, Linford Anderson, had a song called Pop and Top. It was out even before that. That's probably pretty good contender for first reggae record do you so, have pop and top no so so we're in we're in the late 60s at this point we are yeah and, and you know uh, perry was really kind of like coming into his own absolutely all around that time too you got the uh you know the return the, the... oh return of jango is that one is that what that is yeah nice dude so that 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 was a good one he uh and I, I like this one too. This has got some some of the uh, songs from the time. This the scratch the upsetter again. Mm -hmm. I got a wicked glare, even though kind of yeah. it kind of looks like it would be glary, but you know it, they kind of made the cover look like it was supposed to be like three uh, D. Um, I like uh, the the good, the bad, and the upsetters. Nice. That was the upsetters was uh, his band at the time. You know, still looking all young and and. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead or behind, but this this is a great uh, Pressure Sounds compilation that came out. Uh, this is his Jamaican 45s from 1968 to 1973. Uh, nice. So that's a good one. I mean, you got stuff. Uh, my is favorite, people, Junior. Is funny boy on there? No. No, this oh. isn't anything like that. The, the, I, I, want, I want to say they're B-sides, but I don't want to stick uh, you know, my, my uh, foot in my mouth here. My favorite on here, Junior Biles and the Righteous Upsetters. That's that's an interesting one, and then nice. and then um, they got uh, Count Sticky with the Upsetters, who uh, you know we'll talk about later. He's an early DJ from the later '60s. Uh, uh, Silver Tones, 
uh, bleachers and, you know, a bunch of, like, upsetter stuff with, uh, well, like I said, Count Sticky and, like, Val Bennett. Um, so that, that's cool. I always, I, 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 Pressure Sounds, man, they, they did, uh, his early work justice on several different, uh, compilations, but that's the best one of the time, period. Yeah. That well, Pressure Sounds is one of those good labels that I, I really never heard a bad thing on the whole Pressure Sounds label ever, so. I think they're still around. Yeah, they're I think a, they might be, yeah. UK label. I mentioned People Funny Boy, that was a very early reggae record from the young Lee Scratch Perry with, uh, collaborating with Lifford Anderson, who did Papa Top. Um, but yeah, the, the early reggae uh, was characterized with, um, you know, rhythms that were faster, usually faster than rock steady. So and you, and you, you, sp you, you, you said People Funny Boy, a lot of the stuff from that yeah. era, um, yeah. including uh, People Funny Boy and its version are on a the double disc uh, Son of Thunder which is here uh, oh, Lee nice. Perry and the Upsetters uh, from that um, from that same era that we're, we're discussing right but yeah early reggae music so rhythms faster than rock steady usually but not always sometimes they were slower just rougher quality than rougher sounding than your re refined rock steady bass even more prominent in early reggae music the bands like we were talking about Lee Perry had the Upsetters Clancy Eccles had the Dynamites Derek Harry had the crystal um, early reggae uh, sound system DJ started chatting on record um, dub techniques started in the early reggae period younger producers also emerged to challenge um, Clement Dodd and Duke Lee um, like Winford Anderson like Lee Perry Bunny Lee, Clancy Eccles, Winston Riley. Um, a lot of people were introduced to reggae um, before Bob Marley got big. They were introduced by the movie and the soundtrack to the movie How Do They Come. Oh, so, yeah. So I pulled that one because it's just a, a really good early reggae compilation. I'll show it too. You got that? I You got the CD too. Yeah. I I'm got the CD. I'm selling the LP, but yeah. Oh, fuck. You got the LP. Now, yeah. I, I have, I just have the CD. I saw, though, back in the day when I was looking for this, like a two or three disc set of this. Yeah, I remember that. It was like some kind of like anniversary disc or something. Yeah, yeah. It was like wicked, wicked long. Yeah. Um, well, hell, Pat. And, and I, I don't, I don't want to be on like a, a, uh, go on, on some kind of weird Perry tangent, but I just wanted to mention one more thing. The, uh, uh, Kung Fu meets, uh, the dragon, I think, oh, which is important. From the time. Not one of my favorite uh, Perry's, but it's great. I have it on Dubstrumentals here at Trojan. It also features uh, Return of Wax Part 1 and then like uh, Return of Wax Part 2, Musical Bones. Nice. Uh, but you know, the highlights here are if you're going to buy it, buy it for Kung Fu Meets the Dragon. I'm sure you can, you, you may, I mean, you can get a better reissue, but why not go with the bonuses, you know? Because, you know, right. the, the more the more Lee Perry, the better, right? I, I totally agree with that. He's been such a prolific guy, but I mean, the early stuff is, I love the early, the early stuff. So. Foundation, man, building it. The, uh, one of the, the songs that Lee Perry produced, the early reggae songs, was called Tighten Up, and they made a series. Yeah, Tighten, Tighten Up, the uh, various artists. Right, so series. I might pull that, because I had that on vinyl. I had this triple album box set. Right oh, well, what's the uh, box? Is that a box box, or is it like a gatefold? It's a box box. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, good luck finding that now. Is that... Yeah. What are the albums on it? It's a Tighten Up Volumes 1 through 3, so it's got, uh, you know, everything from the uh, early, early Lee Perry production, Tighten Up by the Untouchables, all the way through, you know, stuff like King's Dip, Herbsman, and uh, Wreck of Buddy, Soul Sisters, and all that. I got. I pulled out another LP called uh, Magnificent 14, which was all um, Western-inspired reggae. This is on LP from. So from like sp album. so spaghetti Western films. Yeah, you've got Sir Lord Comic and the Upsetters, Derek Harry and the Crystalites. Skying uh, West, brother. Yeah, Ruby Edwards All Stars are on here. Um, Bongo Les Herman and the Crystalites. GG All Stars. Yeah. Now just just. Uh... I don't want to skip too far ahead, just, I don't know, I guess Perry made me think of it. I want to talk about arguably the first dub album. Do I think it's necessarily the first dub album? I don't know. I, 
I could argue it, just like you said, you could argue about all that kind of shit. Uh, but uh, Herman Chin Loy, Aquarius Dub. Oh yeah. I've been I've, I've been wanting to talk about uh, this CD. I think since we started, you know, when did when did they do this? Seventy. Seventy four. This I think it seventy one originally released in seventy one. Is that right? Yeah. See. Damn. Originally released in 1971. That's pretty early. Yeah, that's super early. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's years before Blackboard Jungle and all that. So. I mean, it's it's very it's very it's like one of the first albums where they 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 mess with the controls a little bit and take out the vocal. So it's okay. when it comes to dub, you're not hearing like cars crashing and children fighting and toilets flushing. It's no right. miles from that. It's just okay. a little tiny reverb. Take out some vocals. They don't even clip the vocals. They just take them out. You can hear them still. Oh, nice. So they just, yeah. you know, I think it was more of maybe an influence on dub than an actual dub record, you know? Yeah, yeah. So talking about the big three in the reggae era, the big three being Prince Buster and uh, Clement Dodd and Duke Reed. Um, let's start out one with uh, Clement Dodd. His band was the uh, Sound Dimension. Oh! Uh, with Jackie Matu. There was also a band of studio called. Do I have to show that now? Do I have to? S I'm, I'm saving my Sound Dimensions for the DJs, man. Okay, okay. We can save for the, you can save for that. I was just going to touch base with a couple records. Yeah, from, do, uh, do it, do it. Do it. All right, so I brought out uh, the first two Burning Spear um, releases, which were on Studio One. Groundbreaking stuff. Early reggae. That dry Early heat. Spear. Dry heat. Yeah. Dry and heavy. That's I think that's later dry, on. Dry. Oh, okay. My bad. But um, we yeah, the first Barry Spear album has stuff like Door Peep, Shout Out Ender, super early Rasta stuff. You know, nice. second album, Barry Spear, Rocking Time. Now he's he's got these records on the bed where a lot of the magic happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm speechless on that. <laughs> but I also brought out the. Uh, Alton Ellis, the classic Studio One, Alton Ellis album, Sunday Coming. Good stuff. I brought out the uh, John Holt, Love I Can Feel on Studio One. John Holt. Yeah, I got a uh, John Holt just because we're talking about him. Uh, and it's it's not even really from the time period, but uh, My Happiness from Clock Tower. I just, uh, I always like this one. It's my favorite John Holt track. Oh, yes. Uh, and then it's, you know, side B is just the version, but. Nice, dude. I figure, I don't know when I was going to be able to, like, kind of shoehorn that in, but I'm yeah, glad right. you mentioned it. I have to bring up uh, Larry Marshall for saying Larry Marshall on Studio One. You know, what's it? Natty Goat is on this. I brought out a couple Jackie Matu uh, compilations. A two disc uh, set that came out in Heartbeat called Tribute to Jackie Matu. Oh, uh, you got that? Yeah, I have it on CD, yeah. Son of a bitch. That's a good one. Do you have Keyboard King? Yeah, Keyboard King, right here. Boom. Um, it's funny, I saw this at your house, and we got the same CD, but you have, like, the dust cover for it. I never got, I didn't get mine with a dust cover. I didn't know it had one. Oh, man. I ne had no idea until I saw it at your place. I'm like, what? No kidding. I thought you had, like, a reissue or something of it, but it's the same one. Yeah, no, I don't know why mine had a... Yeah, I did it. I did a dust cover on it. Yeah. I, I brought out uh, Sounds of Power, the Ernie Wrangling album, just because it's on Studio One, uh, early reggae songs in this period. I brought out Wailing Souls, first uh, self titled release, Wailing Souls, also on Studio One. Um, Duke Reed, his band was Gladi All Stars, Prince Buster. Prince Buster had. Oh, you have the Ten Commandments record. Oh, uh, yeah, let's pull it right here. Show a couple of these. Um, Ten Commandments is super rare. Like you can't, you can't find it. People are selling it for like three hundred bucks. Nice. Of course, mine being that um, I just got the record here, and it's a, it's. I was crazy. I was crazy to see the RCA label. But you know, this is the record. Um, Ten Commandments, original. You know, just uh, you know, I don't got that pretty cover, but here it is. This is the record. <laughs> yeah. Chris Buster also uh, produced uh, 
Chi Chi Rum by Big Youth, which we're going to talk about the uh, DJs in a little bit. Yes, yes. But he, he goes more along with the DJ, but uh, Chi Chi Run was a, 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 that's a super early record. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I don't think they ever put it to CD, but they certainly should. I mean, it's got my vote. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, I want talk, and talking about Studio One, just to kind of show it uh, in the same vein as... Uh, yeah, yeah, another one that was kind of hard to get, but, you know, I got the record here. You know, you got the original Studio One. Uh, this is Good All Over from Delroy Wilson. You know, I really oh, wanted nice. to get it, but I didn't want a $50 record. I wanted right. more of like a $15 record, and it's the same damn record, so you put it on there. Nice. You know, I'm not that great with technology. I'll say that my Delroy I pulled for this period. Pull it. Uh, this is Delroy Wilson's Better Must Come One Day. It was out on the Jamaican Gold label we were talking ah. about. And it's um, the Bunny Lee Productions. Uh, Very nice. Delroy Wilson from the early 70s, early reggae period. 20 songs, including Ungrateful Baby, Better Must Come. Just about every song on this is a classic song. That's probably one of my favorite Delroy Wilson compilations right there. Um, but yeah, you had Joe Gibbs producing The Pioneers. Uh, we mentioned Derek Harriet with his band of Crystal Lights. Bunny Striker Lee's productions like the Delroy yeah. I just showed you. Um, also right here, one shot. Uh, this is Pioneers. I don't want, I'm not going to really talk about it. I've showed it already on the show. So. That's cool. Continue. Here's my uh, Cornell Campbell compilation. Uh, Lee stuff. What, Silver Jubilee, 25 classic cuts. What label? This is on uh, Rhino Records. Nice, huh? So that was that's good. If if Cornell Campbell was a really good vocalist of the early reggae uh, era, yeah, I got that that, uh, that blood and fire joint. He's he's good, man. He's yeah, heavy. he did go on to the, the do the root stuff too. Um, let's see. I brought out um, another producer was Leslie Kong. I brought out a Maytals um, disc called Blah Blah Blah. Mm. You got that? Yeah, I was wondering about that. That's a good one. That's a really good one, actually. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So, very early Toots and the Maytals, including, you know, the seminal releases, Pressure Drop is on here. Yep. Um, you know, the long extended version. Um, Clancy Eccles. Clancy His Eccles. Band with the Dynamites. Um, I believe Neil pulled a Clancy Eccles compilation. I know I've got one called His Reggae Review. Yeah, I'll show this. Uh... Double double disc, a lot of stuff nice. uh, from the the dynamites. Um, man, early, early stuff like like really wicked stuff. Who, who who do you have on here? You got uh yeah he did he did King Stit. Speaking of which, you know he did uh um fabulous flames, silver tones, um third world, uh Lord Creator, Eric Morris. Um, Winston Wright and the Dynamites. A lot of a lot of Dynamites on here. Dusty Brown, um, King Stit and the Dynamites. I didn't, you know, the ugly one. <laughs> oh nice. boy, that's that's a much bigger uh, compilation. The one I have was put out in the uh, on 1990. It was just a one disker. Clancy Eccles presents his reggae review. Sixteen songs, probably a lot of the same material as on here. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I brought up, oh, Harry Moody. He's another producer that started out in the early 60s. I showed you in our last show the, uh, the Count, remember Count Ossie CD. Ah, um, yeah. Well, he came back, you know, he, 10 years later, he's up and producing proper again. And there's a good compilation of Harry Moody Productions called Let Me Tell You, Boy. <laughs> and um, Moody. He kept his recordings um, to himself. He never sold out to um, a VP Records or an Island Records. You can only get Studio One stuff from Studio One. You can only get Harry Moody Productions from you know Harry Moody Moo Disc Records. A lot of them were like that. A lot of them are very untrusting of foreigners, you know, trying to yeah. get into their music. That's true. And and, and um, being somebody that works with Jamaican music currently, I will tell you, it is very hard to get. Uh, to a veteran to talk to even talk with them about their music because they they don't want to talk to you. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. They don't even they don't even tell you stories because they'll feel they'll feel you'll steal that. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, well, I mean, um, artists have been ripped off for as long as there's been, you know, music, and uh, and and in Jamaica too. Mm-hmm. I brought out another producer, Winston Riley. I brought out a compilation of his early reggae called Roots Techniques. His label was Techniques, and so this is a good. This shows you some really early reggae from Dave Barker, Johnny Osborne, and Horace Andy on there. Um, Keith Hudson, another new reggae producer from the early reggae era. I brought out a couple of Keith Hudson's, which I won't spend too much time on because we've talked about Keith Hudson yeah. before. But here's the LP Flesh of My Skin, Blood on My Blood. Uh, here's a compilation called Studio Kind of Cloudy, Keith Hudson Productions. Neil has one that has a, he has a compilation that has even more material than this. Oh, yeah, this, uh, the, uh, the Hudson Affair. We, we did talk about that before, so just flash it up there. I don't know if we went into depth about, um, Flesh of My Skin, but I think, uh, one day we will. Gotcha. Because that is a great, that is a great record. Well, I wanted to move on to some of the early DJ stuff, Neil. How are we doing time-wise? Uh... We got a good, we got a good six, seven minutes. Okay. Well, uh, let me pull up my first one. Uh, DJ music, Jamaican DJ music, beginning in the early seventies. Uroy was was a, a DJ who popularized toasting over music, and um, he and other early uh, toasters are collected on a Glenn Brown production that I have called Double Attack, the original Panama DJ collection, which is way out of Prince Sinatra stuff. <laughs> Nice. Compilation with you, Roy, and they, it's Big Youth, but they call him Big Mouth on this. <laughs> I've seen him as Hugh Roy too. Yeah, Opportunity Rock by Big Mouth. <laughs> Big, that's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, I know we talked about um, Sir Lord Comic earlier, but I want to show this record from 1966, uh, Skying West. From six, uh, this is original 1966. Like this is no reissue. That's nice. original. I'm gonna fucking bring it down the line right now, man. Here's another Lord, uh, Sir Lord comic with uh, Four Seasons. Uh, this is on the the giant label. This is a reissue. Uh, bring it to this um, Andy Cap with Val Bennett Poppy Show on the uh, original Tiger label, and on the back is Andy Cap. It's Papa Top version two. That's sixty eight or sixty nine, I think. Um, uh, so, and then here we go. You have Papa Top. You have Papa Top on, on 45 from 1968. Yep. This is, and here we go, Sir Harry. Um, Key Cop. This is, I think, also 69. This is, you know, original Randy's. You know, that's no reissue. Another really early DJ record. Uh, here we go, Sound Dimensions. This is from 68 or 69. This is right. Sound Dimensions. The DJ is uh, Carrie Johnson. Who did the DJ? Uh, he DJed over there uh, over the Sound Dimensions record, um, and then uh, Lynn Tate and the Jets, El Casino Royale, uh, original um, DJ on that is early Count Sticky, I believe that's also 1969, and then let's finish it up with uh, Count. Mo uh, I call him Count Matchy, but you know, we got a Pepper P Pepper Pot. Um, the back is uh, Jackie, Jackie Mito, and the Randy's All Stars uh, Walking Trouble. This is, like I said, it's a reissue of Randy's Reggae Records. Nice. That was a mouthful, but you know, had to get it out. <laughs> That's fine. I brought out uh, compilations like um, this one called "Keep On Coming Through the Door," Jamaican DJ music, 1969 to 73, which uh, was compiled by Steve Barrow and came out. In the 90s, 18 songs, DJs like King Stiff, Scotty, Prince Heron, Prince Farai, Lloyd Young, Al Capone's on here, Dillinger. A lot of them are, were from the, from like, you know, 70, 71, 72. Man, that, yeah. like, I probably, I, I probably like my first DJ 45s or 66, which was super early. Yeah. Um, yeah. First recorded, I don't know, was it, was it, uh... Was it Sir Lord Comic? 66, Skying West? 66, yeah. man, that's early for yeah. that kind of work. Yeah, it absolutely is. Anyway. Yeah, Sir Lord Comic. But I'm going to tell you something here. 
for uh, our next episode. I think we're gonna we're gonna take up on like the the last half of this uh, early reggae, and then we're we're gonna we're gonna power drive it right into um, right into that early roots. I think yeah, that, I think that sounds like a good idea, don't you? Yeah, sure. Sounds very good. Yeah, let me. Uh, uh, can I put a couple more of these DJ records up, or how are we doing? Put them up. Put All them right. up. I'll do. I'll just go down. I'll, I'll go down down the line here. Okay. Uh, I wanted to show you, Roy and friends, with a flick of my musical wrist, Jamaican DJ music, nineteen seventy seventy three, another compilation from Trojan, compiled by Steve Barrow. Sixteen early. Jamaican DJ music songs. Um, I pulled the uh, you Roy. Uh, I've got his first two albums collected on one tape. Version galore and words of wisdom are collected on this front row release called Version of Wisdom. Um, I got Dennis Al Capone. My voice is insured for half a million dollars. A compilation. I know Neil has a lot of great Dennis Al Capone. Um, we'll we'll get to we'll video. get to that in the next episode. But. Yeah, um, uh, I have Big Youth here and uh, Iroy, their first two albums, Screaming Target and Presenting Iroy, both of which were produced by a teenage Gussie Clark. There. Yeah, is that the Iroy? Yeah, Presenting Iroy, Screaming Target. They use a lot of the same rhythms on both these albums. They do, they do, they very much do. Son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah. But yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys a little survey of that original to make a DJ music and like Neil said next time we're going to come back we're going we're gonna to be like right in it I want to show yeah. this this Uroy LP just to show some LPs off I am the originator it's got um, it's got you know some Randy Studios some Channel One you know Bunny Lee stuff uh, this is the Kingston Sounds label and uh, they have a Dennis Al Capone one too called um, um, Yeah 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 <laughs> And uh, it, it, it's like the same kind of like material. I have some later Dennis Al Capone stuff too. When it, he he moved into more of the root stuff, but um, he was done pretty much uh, when it comes to like uh, the early dancehall stuff, or no, like uh, the later root stuff into the dancehall stuff he cut out. But he still occasionally does record shit, but it's normally with like some weird German band or whatever. Yeah, I wish I'd, I wish I'd seen you, Roy. He's one of the few I never got to see yet. He's still alive. Yeah, he's still, still alive. And still you. records, still, still. Because yeah. my buddy Domus, he's got a track out with him, man. Just came out like last year or something. Oh, nice. And he walks yeah. around, he walks around like kind of like a slug, but you know he's he's yeah. still doing it in the early DJ sound. Now I'm gonna have you take us out because we're at 38 minutes. All right, I'm taking us out. <laughs> See you guys next time. Uh, this is Old School Bound Dance All Neil signing off. Zip Zam Bowie and Swoosh.